The cell biology department uh, at uh, Duke University is one of uh, seven basic science departments. Um, and in my department, uh, some of the faculty are focused on how organs develop and how stem cells maintain them and will repair them after injury. We've got 18 faculty, about 40 postdoctoral fellows, the same number of PhD students, but also MD PhD students and some clinicians who work in the lab, uh, but also see patients um, in the clinic. One of the important things about research is to have uh, model organisms and model systems that help to illustrate uh, fundamental principles. And one of the model organisms which is used in the department is the zebrafish. This has uh, many advantages, particularly for studying tissue regeneration. So I'm in a zebrafish facility here at Duke. There are maybe 100,000 zebrafish swimming around in, in thousands of tanks. And the mission is to understand how and why heart regeneration happens. Uh, we want to find manipulations and factors that increase or decrease the ability to regenerate heart muscle and then to apply that to a non-regenerating system like a mammal. As a cardiologist, we're really excited about what's going on in zebrafish heart regeneration science. Uh, as people get older, we get better at treating patients with acute heart attacks, we're seeing more and more people that come into the clinic with symptoms related to weak heart muscle or cardiomyopathy. Before we can achieve heart regeneration in people, I think there are three big knowledge gaps that need to be filled. The first is we need to figure out what are the right types of therapies to affect regeneration in people. The second big knowledge gap that needs to be filled is we need to really understand the physiology of regeneration. In the lab, we have pristine animals. Unfortunately, when we deal with patients, they're really complicated, and we need to figure out if regenerative therapies will work in people the way that they live and with the other medical problems that they come to have. We also need to understand side effects related to regenerative therapies. And the last thing that we really need to figure out is whether or not regenerative therapies offer a better chance um, in treating heart failure than the current standards that we have. Luckily, we're at Duke where we have really good basic science and really good clinical science, and so we're on a short track to try to figure these things out. The brain is generally thought to be a non-regenerative tissue, and in fact, uh, the interest in stem cells in a non-regenerative tissue such as the brain is pretty exciting. Right? Um, uh, not only do we want to understand how stem cells work, but we are interested in how this could be harnessed to help the brain repair if there was an injury. So um, we studied the basic biology of these stem cells in the brain because there's still a lot to, to learn about their basic biology, how do they produce neurons, and um, stem cells in the brain have been known for quite some time to also produce astrocytes. And are these astrocytes helpful? Are they harmful? And when do they produce astrocytes versus neurons? The knowledge that we gain from studying stem cells in the mouse brain, where it's going to become really useful is how do we take this knowledge and apply it, in my mind, to some sort of a translational research where you can take human tissue and turn that cell from a human into a useful neuron. And how do we put that back into the human brain? I think that's where the next 10 to 15 years is going to be very exciting. I came into this lab as a pulmonologist, so my background is in lung disease. And I am most interested in trying to figure out what causes interstitial lung disease or scarring diseases of the lung and how we can stop them from progressing. We have a number of genetically modified mice that we use to target certain epithelial cell types. We can um, genetically modify these cell types and then follow them with a fluorescent lineage tag so we can track the behavior of these cells after an injury and follow what these cells and any of their daughters do. So we've made a few findings that are very exciting. The first pertains to interstitial lung disease and specifically pulmonary fibrosis. Many investigators have suggested that there's a process known as epithelial to mesenchymal transition that occurs. We have done a number of experiments to show that this is actually not the case and these epithelial cells do not undergo this process and they do not form fibroblasts. Um, this has been a very important finding because it has allowed us to then target our experiments to um, different potential sources of these fibroblast populations. Another exciting finding that we have made is that type 2 epithelial cells in the lung serve as stem cells in the adult lung. So these cells are capable of proliferation and differentiation um, both at steady state and after injury. This is very important because it tells us that these cells do have the capacity to divide after injury and are undoubtedly involved in the pathogenesis 
of different disease processes in the human. My ultimate goal is to find drugs that will um, prevent the progression of these interstitial lung diseases and halt the disease before patients have to go to a life-transforming um, treatment such as lung transplant. Uh, the department has recruited some uh, really energetic and uh, successful uh, young people who have in their labs made important discoveries related to organ growth and uh, tissue repair and regeneration. So it's definitely a team effort uh, and we're very proud of this interaction that we have uh, fostered.